and I give the floor to Ernst and the project Hot City. So I will share my screen. So can you see the screen? Yes, it's working. So, so it's uh, a pleasure for me to be here and to present the Hot City project as Alexander already mentioned, this is a project he's also involved. And the full title of the project is Gamification as a Possibility for the Generation of Data for Energy Oriented Neighborhood Planning. So my name is Ernst gebert geringer and uh, Alex already mentioned I'm working for the Austin Institute of Technology. As, as you can assume, many other people are involved in the project. And I just want to give a brief uh, overview of the outline of the approach presentation. So I want to mention the project overview and the background problems we want to tackle with the project. Then I briefly will introduce the game, so give a game description. And then last but not least, I will talk about the blockchain, why we use it and how we use it. And then we will discuss this uh, later on. So to the project overview, uh, it is a funded research project by the Federal Ministry, Republic of Austria for Climate Action, Environment, Energy Mobility, Innovation and Technology, the BMK, uh, within the city of the future funding frame. And the project partners in the project are on the one hand side, the Austrian Institute of Technology, and they are the Center for Energy, where I am from. And another energy expert in the project are the Grazer Energy Agency. And then we have two game experts, and uh, one is Pickerpipe. Uh, and Pickerpipe is also the blockchain expert in our project. And uh, Pickerpipe is uh, responsible for the backend uh, development in the project for the game and the Digital Sunray, which is a professional game developer, together with Pickerpipe is responsible for the game design and Digital Sunray mainly develops the front end um, for the game. The project duration is it starts in October, started in October 2018 and will last till March 2021. So we have almost another year. Uh, we work on the project, but we already have a lot of experience gained in the last uh, one and a half year. <clears throat> the background and the problem description, um, one might ask why um, this is a funded project. What is the reason for the funds? So as I already mentioned in the title, it's about uh, to collect data for energy oriented neighborhood planning. And the reason for this is uh, that um, data, which is available for energy planning uh, and has a high quality and also uh, is up to date, so a good actuality is rather difficult to get. So often there's a lack on this kind of data and so for the um, energy oriented neighborhood planning, the data would be needed to collect. And the cost for the data collection is also then an issue. Um, and in this context, also we ask, is gamification or can gamification be a solution or, or at least a reduction of the problem? Can we gain something out of gamification? And this is the main idea uh, for the project we want to test. In this context, what is gamification? One definition is the use of game design elements in non-game contexts. So we use the games to get, for example, this energy-related data, which is not uh, um, obviously that it should be needed to be in a game. No? The aimed project results and findings for our project is uh, a proof of concept. So we won't develop a full market ready uh, app or game application. So uh, we want to test, is it possible to collect uh, data cost efficiently, quickly and reliable with this gamification approach. So also the usability of this analysis of the gamification approach is uh, the core of what we do in our project. And uh, another, um, idea what we want to uh, analyze is 
uh, we want to investigate the economic efficiency of the potentials, of the waste heat potential. So is it possible with the game also to analyze the economic efficiency of these collected potentials? And we test the innovative technologies as already mentioned the blockchain, but also artificial intelligence, so machine learning, deep learning, uh, are tested in this context, which I not will talk uh, about in this uh, presentation. Last but not least, one aim of our project is that uh, we will analyze, is it possible to raise awareness for efficiency of energy use and waste heat potentials or renewable energy sources in general in cities or in, in regions? So do the players, after they play the game, have more awareness of uh, how to use energy efficiently and, and the waste heat potentials. Now, a very brief introduction in the game itself. So, um, games should have uh, as compartments uh, motivation and feedback techniques. What we have in our Hot City game is that we have clear targets we give to players. So, uh, we have a reward system uh, in, in the game um, and cooperation or competition, both are normal in games and in our Hot City game, we have both of them. And we have an interactive frame uh, where the people and the players um, can act. The clear targets in our hot cities are to find waste heat sources and if possible, unused waste heat sources. And one might ask why waste heat sources? And there are several reasons. One is that for this already mentioned um, energy planning uh, for neighborhoods, waste heat are very powerful and potential new heat sources for the future to feed in, for example, district heating systems. And the other reason is that uh, AIT, as well as the Graz Energy Agency, have a long time experience uh, for waste heat sources, uh, collection of data developed with other methods. So we have a rather good data set for the cities of Vienna and Graz, where we already know where this data where these waste heat sources are, so we have a good data set to validate the gamification uh, process, no? the results. The reward system in our project is that we use tokens or points the players can achieve, then also levels or badges the players get. And last but not least, it's possible that the players have vouchers so they get incentives, um, which I will explain later on in more details. The interactive frame, what we have in our game is that on a map, the players can mark potential waste heat sources they find. And uh, for these sources, they can collect additional information via the internet or other sources they had. They could even ask the, the owner of this waste heat source or the companies um, mainly uh, about the waste heat source. And important also is um, what I already mentioned that we want to uh, analyze the awareness rising. So the game should have entertainment and education. So entertainment in the combination in the game. And this will be then analyzed um, during the use of the app and the game uh, by our project partners. Cooperation and competition, both is in our game, so the players can join teams or crews or create teams, and um, they can alone or together in teams conquer districts, so squares in the map, you will see them in, in a few seconds. And we have a ranking system, so a high score system also to show the players wherever they are ranked in the game. So what you see on this slide is a um, summary of what I already mentioned. So the game matrix and the actions, uh, so the reward system. So we have bronze, silver and gold heat tokens, we call them. And we have also non-fungible utility tokens. And the tokens can be exchanged into incentives, these so-called vouchers, and uh, the badges and rankings, they're also tokens. The game world is that uh, we will apply the game the city of Vienna and the city of Graz with different players. And as I mentioned before, the reason is why, because we have good 
data for these cities so we can evaluate what we get out of the game approach. And what you see in, in the center here in the map, we have these districts, so uh, with the red uh, squares marked, where the people then uh, can collect uh, uh, and conquer these districts and collect data about potential waste heat sources. The game mode on the one hand side, the player can play versus other players, or as mentioned in groups or teams, um, can, can compete to other teams. The player also, uh, you could say uh, plays versus the environment. So it's the players search for heat sources or the team search for heat sources and collect these heat tokens and try to conquer this district. And what you see on the left uh, side of the screen, you see the profile of one of a players who is this, see what they already got, which kinds of, of heat tokens they have or the latest batch they won and um, so they're always informed also on the high scores on the ranking what they have and, and who is uh, leading the, the ranking. How does the um, Hot City game work? So the people uh, like, for example, Pokemon Go, they will go around in the cities of Vienna and Graz and whenever they think they found a, a waste heat source, they make a picture of this source and then they have to classify this source because we need the information which kind of um, wasted source it is uh, to also estimate the potential and the economic efficiency of this uh, waste uh, source. And after they do this, um, they then submit this um, potential waste heat source to the system and for this submission they get then already uh, awards or a token. And during this process, what you see here in the screen, in the middle screenshot and in the right one, um, they are also guided by the screens um, to know what they are looking for because in the beginning for them it's rather difficult to know what are waste heat sources, what they are looking for. So we give them um, a help uh, what they should try to find and also what we are not looking for because, for example, uh, small chimneys for, from a single household, they are not potential waste heat sources, but the bigger chimney from an um, industry um, is something we are looking for. So, and what you see here on these screens is that on the left side is that uh, after one had uploaded this picture and categorized it, he already gets the feedback from the system that he won, for example, five silver heat tokens. And you also get the information uh, if four other players then will confirm this um, uploaded uh, potential waste heat source as really one and also the position of it, then he will get another five um, heat tokens, for example. And on the right side of this, you see a screenshot for the vouchers. So for example, this uh, player has about 46 gold heat tokens. And in, in the system, for example, for 20 gold heat tokens, you get in a coffee house in Vienna or in Graz, you get their coffee or whatever uh, you, um, they want to give us for 20 uh, gold heat tokens. Here you see on the screens on the on the left side a screenshot in the app where, it, for example, this player has reached the rookie status, the level of a rookie, and on the right side this is the badge for a so-called heat hunter silver uh, badge, and uh, this is also um, something um, they get always uh, when they reach a certain level of. Now uh, I just want to briefly discuss why we use blockchain, what are the targets uh, we use blockchain and how. So um, blockchain should help us to secure the entire gamification ecosystem. So for example, also to help um, to avoid cheating uh, for, from the players. Um, then one important um, thing is the data and the privacy secures 
what we uh, liked or what we try to gain with the blockchain and to ensure a high transparency to exchange the tokens, for example, to vouchers that tokens cannot be spent for more than one vouchers, for example, in different coffee houses. No? And uh, last but not least, uh, as already mentioned, um, we want to test is blockchain in this gaming context really uh, something um, which gives uh, added value in, in uh, the entire gaming process. What you see here is a, a screenshot of the graphical interface of the other testnet node and our main account for the Hot City project. So on the other network, we are on the Ignis child chain. This is where you can create the needed tokens and to send them to the players and set up the smart contracts, which define the Hot City token economics. In the middle of the screen, you see the uh, timestamp and the date of the ongoing transactions, what uh, we see on this other um, interface. What you see here next is um, in gamification, the token economics and the systems, as already mentioned, consists of three tokens representing the bronze, silver and golden tokens. And the, the user received the bronze tokens for easy tasks, for example, the uploading of the unconfirmed pictures and later on get points with more value, for example, for heat sources when they are confirmed. And those tokens can also later be um, redeemed for these vouchers. Um, and also uh, a player can, for example, exchange uh, their own tokens from uh, silver tokens to gold tokens. For example, 100 silver tokens can be changed in one gold tokens. Furthermore, all badges are tokens, meaning um, um, that they are in the system and some badges are singleton tokens. They are unique in the blockchain. Uh, other badges exist more than one time. And um, on this screen, for example, you see that uh, the token distribution and 0 0.0001 token, in this case, uh, uh, hot city silver token equals one point in the game. And this using of this decimal uh, smiles gives us uh, nearly unlimited resources of tokens with the same asset ID. So, and also, very important to confirm is uh, um, in the end uh, to, to talk about that the design and uh, the um, creation of an account, how the players can participate is in two ways possible. One is that they would be able to use their own other wallet if they have one, so their own other address, or uh, that they create uh, one uh, when they create their account. And currently in the prototype, we use this that uh, whenever they create an account, they create also this wallet. But we think that in the future, it is a, a nice opportunity and will be maybe the main uh, um, way how the people uh, would participate if they have their own um, wallets in the other um, system and then can participate. And if they participate as we have it in the prototype, then it's very important that the private key is also encrypted and not visible for us. So if they lose, for example, the generated passphrase, then they will also use, as you see in this screenshot, uh, they will use the access to their account. So it's very important that they don't lose their passphrase. So, this is a very brief introduction in, in the blockchain, in the system, what we use. And um, the project teams, um, what you see here on this screen, so the main blockchain experts are in, as already mentioned, in picker pipes. So Thomas Wernbach and Alexander Pfeiffer, will all, which already, um, or which also um, are in this conference. And the others are the experts for the uh, energy systems and for the um, validation of the found heat potentials. And you have here the Hot City homepage. Uh, and as Alex already mentioned, the um, Hot City 
project was also awarded in an Austrian blockchain award. So we won the uh, prize for the research uh, project in Austria uh, a few weeks ago. So we are very proud of this. And uh, if you want to have more information about the project, as you go to this uh, homepage, I think you will get the presentation. And uh, the other way would be that you send me an email after this presentation or you now ask me and I try to answer all your questions. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ernst. I think you have to close your screen sharing first. Perfect. Um, just, just something that we learned today from Leo Jaffe, one of the main developers of Ador. In the next version of the blockchain, they will solve our issue with the Ador accounts. So we are able to create a main account for the game and then uh, sub accounts for our players. And then the players can actually reset their passwords which is a great thing because mm -hmm. this would be also on blockchain. And when we thought about our project, this was one of our major issues, I think. That's why we kept the private keys for our players. So any, any questions uh, for Ernst, please? You know, you, you can use the chat or the Q&A section of Zoom. So in the chat this email about to... yes, Thomas Mianbacher used it to post the link. Yeah, to post the link. Again, don't be shy. Usually I have to say this before people start to ask the speaker. In this case, Ernst, I say thanks a lot for giving us the presentation. And we will switch to the final talk. And the final talk will be about gambling and blockchain technologies. And uh, Nicolas, can you be so kind and play the last file um, from today's conference? Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Thomas Stauderer and I'm very honored to be able to speak at this conference. Before I start with the content of the presentation, let me say just some words on my background and on the setup of the presentation. I've worked in the gambling industry for more than 15 years now and in my last role I headed the internal audit department concerning land-based casino operations for a big gambling group of companies which also operates lotteries, betting and online. I'm involved in the Bitcoin blockchain crypto space in several years and since one and a half year I'm full-time working for a blockchain Bitcoin gambling project together with my technical partner Thomas Burgstaller. Thomas Burgstaller comes from the IT side, has more than 20 years work experience in the IT industry and before he joined our project he was co-founder and CTO of a startup. We are focused on blockchain, Bitcoin and the gambling industry and our initial main interest is in the area of payment and value transfer. Our first client is a land-based casino in Liechtenstein where we implement a technical solution so they can accept Bitcoin crypto payments from their guests and also can pay out that way. Besides, we are also providing the project management and the needed consulting. In general, we are interested in which existing problems within the gambling industry could be solved with blockchain technology and which new business models could be enabled. In that regard, we are also quite close monitoring other technological and socioeconomic developments, for example, virtual reality or esports, and other in other industries, especially gaming. Regarding the presentation, I will start with some forewords on blockchain and on the gambling industry. Afterwards, I'll move to selected use cases, opportunities and risks of blockchain technologies in the gambling industry. Thomas Burgstaller will also present you some small technical showcases in between. Considering the time frame, I can of course only give a high level overview and not an in-depth presentation. So let's start. In 
In a strict sense, the term blockchain only refers to a special data structure. Transactions or information are put together in blocks, get cryptographically secured, and then these blocks are linked together. So in this sense, a blockchain is a cryptographically secured ledger or a cryptographically secured database. However, the actual technological innovation that started with Bitcoin in 2008 includes other essential elements. First, decentralization. The ledger, the blockchain, is stored on a large number of computers in a linked peer-to-peer -peer network. Second, a consensus mechanism. This mechanism decides which transactions are valid or technically legitimate and which are added to a new block and then to the blockchain. If then also everyone who wants to participate in such a network is able to participate, then we speak of an open, public and permissionless blockchain. Essentially, these elements of an open permissionless blockchain create an immutable, secure, transparent, neutral, censorship resistant ledger, a network of trust without intermediaries, without the need of a middleman, without the central authority. In my perspective, open permissionless blockchains have a potentially disruptive character in many areas and industries. These blockchains enable really new business models and opportunities. It's the paradigm shift from central to decentralized systems, from closed to open systems, which makes it so very interesting and exciting and worth thinking about its implications. I mention this because there are also many developments regarding private permission blockchains, mainly driven by the traditional IT and consulting companies. I'm not saying that these are useless, but in my opinion, these developments will not lead to major advantages and definitely not to disruption. The potentially disruptive element is the paradigm shift, not the data structure blockchain. Having said that, I still believe that it is necessary to also keep an eye on these developments. Hybrid solutions, for example, where you can implement private permission sidechains on top of open public functions, like the other Ignis blockchain framework, could be quite interesting. We are still in a very early phase. Let's see what the future brings and if I'm right in my conclusions. So now let's move to the gambling industry and the possible opportunities, use cases, and risks of blockchain technologies. In the gambling industry, we have several actors. In general, we can separate between operators, suppliers, regulatory and supervisory bodies, and of course, there are other customers, the players. In my opinion, the main advantages of blockchain technology is in the underlying properties. I think by applying blockchain technology, you can improve the reliability of the technical infrastructure and the systems which are used. You can put further anti-fraud controls in place. You can strengthen the existing internal control systems. This is useful for the operators itself, but also adds value for regulators as it can lead to solutions where they can independently verify that the technical infrastructure the gambling systems or games are compliant and operated in a proper way. As customers want to play in a safe and secure way and want to be sure that it is not cheated on them, it also adds value for them. You could also make their life easier. Think, for example, on faster cross-border payments for high rollers with cryptocurrencies. Furthermore, I see the possibility for operators to improve efficiency. I think it is possible to lower certain process and transaction costs. Also in the marketing or customer relationship area, I see opportunities for them. <coughs> so what could be possible specific use cases and opportunities? As a first example, I would like to talk about slot machines in land-based casinos. These slot machines are connected via a slot network and relevant information is transmitted and shared in this network and gets stored in databases. This is done for accounting purposes, for calculating the profit and also for some other reasons, for example, management reporting and analysis. So here you could think about the blockchain based slot network. As there is quite critical and sensitive information, it would make sense to store such information, including a timestamp, immutable and secure in a blockchain. That can be seen as an anti-fraud control as it would not be able to alter this information afterwards 
And this would be an advantage both for the operator and for supervisory bodies. But also for customers, this was, would add value. As in case of malfunctions, they could be sure that no one can change relevant information afterwards. This example can, of course, also be applied to other systems. Think about the gaming systems of lottery operators. Today, customers have to trust the operators that they operate in a proper and lawfully way. Especially, they have to trust them that the correct percentage of the revenue of all ticket sales is paid out. With an immutable, transparent, and traceable blockchain-based lottery system, the customer could verify on its own that everything happened in a correct way. Of course, also in the online gambling world, it's worth thinking about such blockchain-based gambling systems. So coming to betting, if you consider the fact that you can apply smart contracts on several blockchains, you can think of enabling decentralized peer-to-peer -peer betting. So you could enable people to put their own bets online and let others bet against them. And the operator can take a percentage of this betting revenue. On such blockchains where you can apply smart contracts, you can also create own tokens. You can create tokens which represent a value. You can create tokens which represent a specific asset or a share of an asset. Or you can create utility tokens for specific use cases. Utility tokens you could, for example, use for reward programs and bonus programs. If you think of security tokens as a new form of financing, it can, of course, also be interesting for gambling companies to think about it. Coming back to the slots area in land-based casinos, you could, of course, also add the possibility of cryptocurrency payments directly on the slot machine. Cryptocurrency payments could also be used in the table games area directly on the table to buy chips, like nowadays with cash. But to think a little further, maybe there could also be a possibility for instant transfers for each bet without chips. So a player would place a bet via a mobile wallet, and in case the player wins, an automated table system would transfer back the winning in its wallet. In that way, you could eventually create a chipless casino operation. This would reduce costs for the operator as cash handling causes costs. It would also reduce certain fraud risks as cash handling is quite risky. Furthermore, it would enable instant win calculation. For the player, it would save time as he would not need to go to the cage anymore and in that way, it would be more convenient. I don't see this scenario in the near future as technology is not that far, adoption is not that far, and also guests would probably not accept it right now as they are used to chips. But in my opinion, it's worth thinking in that direction. For now, I see more the opportunity of, of, of accepting cryptocurrency payments and pay, paying out cryptocurrencies in the traditional setup. This is not only interesting for casinos, but mainly also for online operators. With that way, you could solve existing problems. For example, you can make international money transfer easier, or you can solve further problems like credit card restrictions. I think you can also attract new customers, especially the younger generation, and in general, people who already hold cryptocurrencies. In that way, it could also be seen as a marketing tool. For larger payments, I think Bitcoin is the best choice because of its security. Besides, of course, altcoins are interesting because people hold them. In both cases, there is the risk or problem of volatility, which is obviously not good. So stable coins could be a solution for that. Right now, I think it's also necessary to keep an eye on the starting developments of central bank digital currencies and corporate coins like Facebook's Libra. Regarding risks, I see mainly technological risks and problems. For example, scaling, usability, and security, all still an issue. Besides, there are risks regarding the regulatory frameworks and therefore compliance risks especially when it comes to payment and tokens. So now, before I come to a short closing statement, Yada, Thomas, will present you some showcases. So Thomas, your turn.
Thank you. So now as we are nearly coming to an end, I just want to address two last questions. The first is, what will be the strategic and long-term impact of blockchain on operators? What I mean with this question is that open blockchains have an inherent strategic risk to disrupt the mobile gambling industry. Similar to the finance industry, where the first attempts with decentralized finance and decentralized exchanges are already productive. I think this question has to be asked, and in the gambling industry, you have to keep a very close eye on the further developments in blockchain technologies. Gambling and gaming is also more and more overlapping. A good example are loot boxes in video games, which are classified as gambling in certain jurisdictions. Esports is getting bigger and bigger. So the second question is, how will these developments affect the gambling industry? And how will the new ways of gambling and gaming look like? Imagine a scenario where you go with your avatar in a blockchain-based virtual reality world, where you can pay with your Bitcoin wallet in a virtual casino or lottery shop. There you can also interact with others, with friends, like in a land-based casino or in a brick-and-mortar betting venue. You can also bet on a land-based blackjack table via live stream, if you want. So with this, I want to end today's presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Thomas and Thomas for their talk. Um, tomorrow, I will talk about the connection of, of games, gambling, and blockchain. And some of your examples are, and I'm happy about it, are similar to what I'm going to present tomorrow. Before we do the Q&A, so you have a minute to think about your questions. As you know, we had a little issue with the time schedule. And basically, what's GMT plus one is, in fact, GMT plus two. And what's on the time schedule GMT plus two is GMT plus three. So just for tomorrow, that when you look on the time table, you know when, when we start. On the MIT website, I already fixed the issue, but on the official website from uh, Drexel, Nicholas has to fix the issue after the conference. Um, so questions for Thomas. Yeah, my hands are a little full right now. If you ever like, to speak with someone who is a senior in the gambling industry and someone who knows everything about blockchain, it's your big chance. <laughs> East Central Land just released an online casino, have not looked into yet. What do you think of Pool Together or Unipot? <coughs> Yeah, I, I think Decentraland was one of the things I, I thought of when I uh, when I talked about the last uh, scenario. So especially that is what what I'm really interested to combine these uh, these virtual environments, and one of them is uh, definitely Decentraland. Then I ask you a question. We, we have seen your examples, actually working examples on the Lightning Network. They're working perfectly. And if you see such videos, you think, wow, this is something we should use immediately. But we both know that, in fact, it might take a certain time frame until people understand what is Bitcoin and then even until people understand what is a Lightning Network. So what do you, how long do you think might it take until we walk into an offline casino and actually use our wallets uh, to, to, to get the virtual tokens and, and play with them? Uh, so yeah, right now we are implementing that solution in, in Liechtenstein with uh, on-chain transactions, but we are, we are running several lightning nodes and there is a second possibility right now with the liquid network from Blockstream, uh, which works similar to Lightning Network. Uh, and there you also can, uh, can issue assets. So I think it will, it will be one, two years where you see these things coming up very much, in my opinion. 
so much faster than most of us would would expect something that that uh, comes as i said faster than we expect and then people will adapt to it and yeah i think uh, you, you have some 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 examples right now there are mobile games using lightning already for payouts uh, so i think we're quite on a good way and yeah maybe one or two years there will be much of involvement in in that way Andreas suggested that you should look to into crypto voxels and tomorrow we yeah. have the presentation of crypto venus so uh, if you have time you can you can have a look at their presentation yeah crypto voxels all also a, a very interesting example for that uh where i think you can go further in such yeah maybe virtual words thank you for that yeah any any further uh, last questions before we conclude day one so then thanks for everyone from from my side that you joined us i'm so sorry that due to this technical glitch we lost more than half of our participants unfortunately <laughs> um, but i hope that tomorrow everything will look Will, will work perfectly from the beginning and I hope that you will join us again um, tomorrow and also give us the organizers inputs tomorrow for the next edition of, of this conference. Nicholas, do you like to say something at the very end? Well, of course, thank you very much, Alexander, for organizing and running this uh, and hosting. I think that uh, it is running as smoothly as one can expect under such, such circumstances. So uh, really impressive. Um, looking forward to tomorrow. And I think, you know, for all participants and attendees, you should be able to use the same link that you received today to join, like make sure it's the click to join link to uh, join us again tomorrow. Uh, we should have the webinar broadcast uh, begun at least a half an hour before the agenda starts. Uh, it might even be earlier. And so on that, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone tomorrow.